Is AbbVie stock a smart buy right now? That's the big question we're tackling today. Hi, welcome to Global Value, and in this video, we're going to dive deep into a fundamental analysis of AbbVie stock, ticker symbol ABBV. We'll use methods from none other than Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors of all time. We'll study the key numbers that Buffett values most, and then we'll figure out three different prices for AbbV to really understand what it's worth in today's market. Stay with me till the end because our combined final fair value and rating might just surprise you. And there's more. I'll also share a special bonus that could be the deciding factor when adding AbbV stock to your portfolio. So is AbbV a great chance to make money? Let's figure out together. Right now, AbbV stock trades for $154.97 per share. At the end of 2023, their stock price is down 5.5% year to date. This dramatically underperforms the market. The S&P 500 is up more than 24%. AbbVie's in the headlines because they're acquiring Cerebral Therapeutics for $8.7 billion. This is a neuroscience drug maker, which AbbVie is paying $45 per share and is expected to close this deal in the middle of 2024. Deal making like this is part of AbbVie's attempt to expand its pharmaceutical pipeline. This comes as their top-selling treatment, Humira, faces significant generic competition, which could eat into their profits. Their stock price isn't all the returns for shareholders. Right now, AbbVie pays a market-beating 3.82% dividend yield. Their average dividend yield is added to any gains in their stock. In the last handful of years, it's a different story for AbbVie. They've compounded at 12% annually. Even though they underperform the market, they've been neck and neck for a decent amount of this time, especially in the last few years. AbbVie went public as a spinoff from Abbott just over a decade ago. In that time, they've compounded at around 12% annually. They actually beat the market. When their dividends are added to this, AbbVie beats the market even farther. But the burning question is, why should we be paying close attention to AbbVie? Right now, AbbVie trades $13 below their 52-week high. This comes as they trade $23 above their 52-week low. There's not a lot of short interest with less than 1% of their shares sold short. And how big is AbbVie? They're absolutely huge. They have a $273 billion market cap. This makes them one of the largest drug companies in the world. AbbVie also uses a good amount of debt in their business. They have a $321 billion enterprise value. AbbVie is a pharmaceutical firm with strong exposure to immunology and oncology. The firm's top drug, Humira, represents close to half of the company's current profits. The company was spun off from Abbott in early 2013. Its acquisition of Allergan adds several new drugs in aesthetics and women's health. Allergan was acquired by AbbVie in May of 2020. They had announced a deal the previous year for AbbVie to pay $63 billion for the company. Allergan is most famously the maker of Botox. Now with that understanding, let's dive deep into the numbers that Warren Buffett cares about. This step-by-step -step checklist style approach reverse engineers how Warren Buffett would look at a company's numbers. It gives you one of the best shots of finding undervalued high quality stocks that can beat the market and make you a lot of money in the process. So let's get started with metric number one. We want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. This is because an average business earns around 7% returns on capital. For each dollar that's invested into the company, either by using debt or raising equity, return on capital can be thought of as how much they make for that dollar. So if the average company makes $1.07 for each dollar invested in the business, if we can find one that makes $1.14 or greater, that's a lot higher and it can mean the business is higher quality. AbbV closed their Allergan acquisition in 2020, that's why their return on capital numbers are down in that year. Still, their returns were around 14%. In the rest of this time, they've been in either the 20s or the 30%. In fact, when these are averaged out, AbbVie earns 24.6% average returns on capital in a given year. That's pretty close to where they've been at recently, and that's more than three times better than a normal business. This is a huge check on metric number one for AbbVie. In our second metric, we want the company to be growing. It's harder to make investing mistakes when you invest into a growing company that's undervalued. With this, we want to see that their sales, earnings, and free cash flows are up. In this time, because of organic growth and their Allergan acquisition, AbbVie has grown their sales by 68% up until today. Their earnings have grown by 15%, and the company's free cash flows, most importantly, have grown by 93%. That's very strong growth on the back of their big acquisition. It's another check on metric number two. In metric number three, we want their earnings per share to have grown in the last five years. This looks at AbbVie from the view of an individual shareholder. 
We learned in our last metric that their earnings have grown by 15%, but at the same time, AbbVie's diluted shareholders by 15%. This is because they issued shares in part to fund their Allergan acquisition. Because of this, even though they earned $3.66 for each share that they had outstanding in 2018, in their last 12 months up until the end of 2023, the company has actually just earned $3.65, even though that's not shown here. Because of that, that's actually a penny less, which means this is an X just by the slimmest of margins on metric number three. In metric number four, we want to look for something similar. We want to see free cash flow per share growth. Unlike their earnings, AbbVie's free cash flows have grown by even more over this time. This is important because free cash flow is really the lifeblood of any business. Ultimately, it's how a business is valued. This means it's more important we're seeing free cash flow per share growth. AbbVie's grown their free cash flows per share over this time despite issuing these new shares. In their last 12 months, they brought in $13.98 of free cash flow. Because of this, it's a check on metric number four. So far through four metrics, we have three checks and only one X. Stay with me till the end of the video because we'll use three different methods based on their free cash flows to figure out what a fair value is for AbbVie. Before we get to that, how about we check in on our bonus? Right now, AbbVie pays a big market-beating 3.82% dividend yield, but there's more. If we combine their dividend history with their parent company, Abbott, which they were spun off from in 2013, AbbVie is a dividend king. They've grown their dividend payments each year in the last 52 years, going back more than half a century. That's an incredible track record only matched by a few household names like Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson, and Procter & Gamble. Still, even with this amazing track record and the high amount of dividends they pay out, we want to check to see whether these dividends are supported or not. With this, we want these dividend increases to be covered by their free cash flows. That has been the case in all of the last five years. It's also the case today. Abby has steadily grown their dividend payouts, but they've grown their cash flows even faster than this, especially on the back of that big Allergan acquisition. AbbVie supports their dividends, which is exactly what we want to see. This is a check on our bonus. Keep in mind, AbbVie's looking for a replacement for its Humira profits. As long as they're able to keep growing their free cash flows, it looks like they'll be able to keep supporting this dividend. But with that big headwind on the horizon, that's something you need to be mindful of. So far, we've learned AbbVie earns very high returns on capital and they've grown, including on a per share basis. But those aren't the only qualities of a truly wonderful business. Great businesses can do this without using a lot of debt. In fact, in recessions, it's businesses with too much debt that can have the biggest losses and even go broke. You don't want to be investing into bankrupt companies. So in metric number five, we want their net debt to be below the sum of their free cash flows in their last five years. Net debt takes AbbVie's debt and subtracts their cash and their short-term investments. AbbVie took on a lot of debt to fuel their Allergan acquisition, which again took place in 2020. That peaked just shy of $79 billion in that year. Since then, AbbVie's been focused on aggressively paying this down. They ended 2022 with $55 billion in net debt. At the end of 2023, they're sitting on $48 billion of net debt, so they continue to pay this down. At the same time, their free cash flows have really seen a big uptick. In the last five years, when we add these together, AbbVie has brought in $88.6 billion worth of free cash flow. That's nearly double their current net debt position, and it's way more than enough cash to easily support their debt loads. This is exactly what we want to see, as it doesn't look like AbbVie is using too much debt in their business. It's a check on metric number five. Now, how much is AbbVie possibly worth? The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want AbbVie's average five-year free cash flow divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. This is our first of our three ways of valuing the company. Right now, AbbVie has a $321.5 billion enterprise value. This adds their market cap together with their net debt to figure out what the company might look like if it's a private business. In the last five years, AbbVie's brought in $17.7 billion of free cash flow in an average year over this time. When that's divided by their enterprise value, we get a 5.5% average free cash flow yield. That comes in above the benchmark we're looking for. Currently, Abby brought in $24.7 billion of free cash flow in their last 12 months. When that's divided by their enterprise value, it gives us a 7.7% current free cash flow yield. That's even higher than their average. Both of these come in above that benchmark, which is exactly what we want to see. This means on metric number six, it's a check for AbbV. Don't just run out and go buy the business. Use common sense and do what's right for you personally. 
Keep watching for our next two fair values, then watch till the end of the video when we put these three estimates together to figure out what AbV is really worth. Everything we've covered so far is important, but we're still missing something. This takes us to our second estimate to use a DCF valuation to figure out what a fair value might be for AbV. This is based on their free cash flows and projecting them out into the future. Like any other model, this output is sensitive to its inputs. So we're going to take an average of Abby's three-year free cash flows because free cash flows can be lumpy year to year. We're going to smooth these out a bit. Then we're going to take growth assumptions for how Abby has grown in their past to estimate how they'll grow. It's up to you to do your own homework to figure out if this is accurate or not for Abby. If we take their average free cash flows and assume they grow at 11% in each of the next 10 years, then in the following decade, we'll assume that these grow at 5.5%. We're going to add in their tangible book value. Because AbV is a pharmaceutical company, they're going to tend to have lower amounts of fixed assets than some other businesses they're sized, plus they also use a lot of debt, so they actually have negative tangible book value. The accounting for the business throws us off a bit, so that's something you need to understand in more depth for yourself. If we want a market beating 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett looks for from his investments, at today's valuations, it looks like an estimate of AbV's fair value per share is around $135. Keep some key points in mind. Right now, AbV is trading for its median valuations in the last decade. They've traded for around 17 times price to owner earnings, which is exactly where they're trading at today. This has dropped all the way to as low as 12 times price to owner earnings, which is about when Warren Buffett invested into the business for himself. We'll use a guru focus value as our third estimate for AbV. Right now, this comes in at $134 per share with a modestly overvalued rating. This uses how AbV has traded in their past, their business performance, and analyst estimates for the future to estimate another fair value. AbV's valuation chart means it may be attractive based on a Peter Lynch value and maybe even a more aggressive DCF model. It's right around where they're based on earnings and where they've traded in their past. So far, we've looked at the numbers that Warren Buffett cares about, but it's the qualities of a business that are even more important to him. Why don't we learn what these are for AbV so we can put them together with our estimates to figure out what the company is actually worth and what price you would want to pay for the business to make money. We're going to start with a long thesis first. Number one, AbV supports a strong dividend yield, which should act as valuation support as the cash flows to support the dividend look secure over the next several years. Number two, AbV's increasing entrenchment in blood cancers should bode well for growth as pricing power remains solid in this therapeutic area of the drug market. Number three, AbV's next generation immunology drugs targeting the IL-23 and JAK pathways should help mitigate the competitive threats facing Humira over the next five years. But it's not all sunshine and roses for AbV. Let's look at a short thesis as well. Number one, several of AbV's pipeline drugs in immunology have mechanisms of action similar to treatments already approved taking away the first mover advantage for AbV. Number two, the high profit margins on Humira will likely cause an amplified impact on earnings as sales are lost to eventual biosimilar competition over the next several years. Number three, the extra debt to finance the Allergan acquisition could put more pressure on AbV if core assets like Botox and Humira face tougher competition than expected. Again, AbV is trying to mitigate those drug losses with their recent cerebral acquisition, but that could still take time to play out. Now, this far in our analysis of AbV, we learned they go five for six on our select six analysis. The company earns big returns. They've grown a lot through their acquisition. Even after issuing shares and taking on debt, it looks like they're able to manage those. Plus, they look like they could trade for an attractive valuation. They're only off on their earnings per share growth, which was about flat. And in the case of AbV is probably their least valuable metric. So despite facing drug losses in the future, AbV is still an entrenched pharmaceutical company. Right now, AbV is owned by these five super investors, with the biggest position being David Katz, who has 3.5% of his portfolio in AbV. Warren Buffett used to own AbV in his portfolio as part of a broader bet on a basket of pharmaceutical stocks. He invested into this basket in the third quarter of 2020. He added again in the fourth quarter, and then he totally sold out of AbV by the first quarter of 2022. In that time, even though he sold out, he made money on holding AbV. If he would have held up until today, he would have made even more money. So it seems like he sold this position too soon. This analysis isn't financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Use common sense and do what's right for you. With that in mind, when we add in our three fair value estimates, 
Right now, it looks like a fair price to pay for AbbVie would be around $146.5 per share. Keep in mind, fair value is a range on either side of this number. Value investing involves paying a price that's lower than this to get more value for your money. In the last year, AbbVie's traded below those levels. AbbVie's fair value comes in $20 below their street target price of $168 per share. If you enjoyed today's AbbVie stock analysis, like it, share your thoughts in the comments, subscribe to the channel for more, and watch this next video. You may enjoy it too.